These are the Fourier transform pairs we're going to use in our course. Notice how in the left column we've got the function in the time domain. On the right column we've got its Fourier transform. Here's the definition on the top column. The most common ones are the unit impulse. Now this looks just like what we did with the Laplace transform. The transform of an impulse is 1. The transform of a step looks quite different though. In the Laplace world, this is true. But in the Laplace world, the transform of a unit step is 1 over s. So if we replace s with j omega, we only get this part. And this is new. This is the one exception to the rule I gave earlier, that the Fourier transform of a right-sided signal, in other words, a signal that's 0 to the left of the origin, is the same as the Laplace transform, just with s replaced by j omega. Now here's something that's very different in the Fourier transform world. When we talked about Laplace transforms, there was no difference in the time domain between 1 and u of t. Both of those functions had the same Laplace transform because the Laplace transform only looked at the right side. The Laplace transform began integrating from 0 minus to infinity, unlike the Fourier transform that begins integrating at time equals negative infinity. So unity, 1 everywhere, is different than u of t in the Fourier transform world, unlike the Laplace world, where both of these have the exact same Laplace transform of 1 over s. This sinc function, this sine of a function of omega over omega, that's something new. That's this, that's this pulse we talked about last class that is tau wide that goes between 0 and 1. A unit ramp is new. Here's our axes, and the unit ramp looks like, looks like that. Magnitude of t, so for t greater than 0, it's the same thing as, as t. For t less than 0, it's the same thing as negative t. Notice how our right-sided exponential, here's our right-sided exponential, has the exact same Fourier transform as what we'd expect from our Laplace transform, just with s replaced by j omega. But because the Fourier transform is two-sided, it includes that negative infinity as opposed to starting off at 0. It also lets us look at left-sided exponentials. So a left-sided exponential looks like this, just like the right-sided exponential flipped around the vertical axis. And then it also lets us examine signals that are dual-sided that look like this, the combination of the right and left-sided exponential. Now these transform pairs, just like Laplace transforms, are relatively limited, and there exists a great many functions and there exist a great many functions which have Fourier transforms that don't appear in this particular graphic. To help you change an arbitrary given waveform into one of these transform pairs, you can use these transform properties. These Fourier transform properties are very similar to the properties you've already studied with the Laplace transforms. Let's start off with linearity. Linearity is says, I'll give an example, it's, it's written here, it says that if you know what a transform is of f1 of t, if you know this is its Fourier transform, then if you multiply it by a constant, you just multiply the Fourier transform by the same constant. So as an example, if you know that e to the minus uh, 2t, let's multiply it by 3, has a, we well, already know it's Laplace transform, and its Fourier transform is almost the same, the Fourier transform of this portion is 1 over s. It would be s if it was Laplace. It, we're doing Fourier, so it would be j omega plus 2. And then linearity says if you multiply it by this 3, then that's like multiplying the Fourier series by 3 also. And you could extend that if you were adding to it a different waveform like u of t, then in the transform domain, that would be, have to scroll up and take a look at what that transform is. 
here's our unit step over here. So that would be pi times this impulse plus 1 over j omega, where this whole section is that section. Time shift is another popular one. We've already covered examples of that in detail in the Laplace world. But just like in the Laplace world, a time delay of t naught is like multiplying your Laplace transform by e to the minus s t naught in the Laplace transform domain. In the Fourier transform domain, it's like multiplying your Fourier transform by e to the minus j omega t naught. Same idea. Frequency shifts are encountered less often, but just like multiplying by a negative exponential in the frequency domain is like a time shift in the time domain. Multiplying by a complex exponential in the time domain is like a frequency shift in the frequency domain. There is a difference in the, in the signs. This is a, a negative and this is a positive, but it's still the concept of complex exponential in one domain corresponds to a shift in the other domain. Time differentiation is something that's encountered much more commonly in Fourier transforms than in Laplace transforms. And it says that the derivative, the time derivative of a function, has as its transform, same transform as if it wasn't the derivative, but just multiplied by j omega. In other words, multiplying by j omega is like taking a derivative, just like in the Laplace transform, multiplying by an s was like taking a derivative. And the opposite is true too. If we want to integrate, we're going to divide by j omega, just like in the Laplace world, we would divide by s. In the Fourier transform world, this part is added as well. And that's again because here we're looking at all integration from negative infinity on up. Just like in the Laplace domain, a convolution in one domain is like multiplying in the other, and here multiplying in this domain is like convolving in the frequency domain. So that's a lot of talking. I admit it's boring. Let's see if there's a more entertaining way to learn this. Bill Sethers from the University of Wisconsin-Madison tried putting this to song. 